So last week, when I was finishing up the Arcanine run, I was really thinking, what is a Pokemon that could struggle even more than that? Because Arcanine was able to make it all the way through Giovanni without needing to use Double Team on minimum battles. But is it possible that a Pokemon like Magneton will not be able to do that? Think about it. It's going to struggle against Giovanni every time it fights him, it's going to struggle against the final champion because it doesn't have a move that's stabbed that can affect Sandslash. So let's get into this. We're going to get our Magneton and name it Magnet Tank because that was contributed by our good friend Andrew Palmer. And let's get into this run here. So we are going to start off, of course, by taking on Rival 1. And he's fairly easy because Thundershock is pretty strong and we have great special. So he goes down. Now we can move on to Viridian Forest where the Caterpie is just a few Thundershocks and it goes down as well. Now moving on to Brock. Brock is not actually an issue because Sonic Boom does a fixed 20 damage. So we are able to just use Sonic Boom to take both of his Pokemon down. The early game really is no trouble for Magneton at all. We are crushing absolutely everything with this ridiculous 120 special stat. So here against the Team Rocket, we are going to just do the same thing. Spam, Sonic Boom, and Thundershock to take their Pokemon down. After we've taken down their Pokemon, it's just natural. We're going to go take on Misty because we have a type advantage. So here in the Misty fight, all we have to do, just spam Thundershock over and over and over again. She takes us out one time, but it's really not that bad. On our fourth attempt here, we come back and we are able to just use Thundershock and Sonic Boom to take her team down. And there we go. So Misty, really not a problem. Let's take on Rival 2. Here, we have to use Sonic Boom on Sandshrew because it can't be affected by Thundershock. But for Rattata and for Eevee, it's just a couple Thundershocks to take them down, and there we go. So compared to Arcanine, we're literally a couple hours ahead at this point, because it took us so long to get through Brock with Arcanine. We're just crushing everything on the way up to Bill's house, and we're going to save him from his Pokemon experimentations. Now, with that being done, we can get on to the single most important and difficult trainer in the entire game. You know who he is. It's the innocent bystander. But in this one, he's no problem. Two Thundershocks takes down Machop, and then it's three Thundershocks to take down Drowsy. Done and done. We can make our way now to the SSN and fight Rival 3. So... Here against Rival 3, we are going to lead off with Thundershock to take down Spiro, then Thundershock again to take down Rattata, and now we have to use three Sonic Booms to take down Sandshrew, and then it's two Thundershocks to take down the Eevee. Done and done. So now we have the Cut HM, and we can go fight Lieutenant Surge because, hey, let's get Thunderbolt, why not? So here, we're just going to heal up really quickly before we fight him. We're making it so that we can dig back to Cerulean instead of having to walk back. So let's just see how this goes. Here, we are going to start by using Thunder Wave to paralyze him. And now we can go into Sonic Boom, where when he uses Growl, it doesn't matter. And we take him down. So now we have probably our single strongest move for the entire run, which is Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt has... 100% accuracy and great power to the point that even here as we go through the next route we're going to be using it on all the grass types and the slow pokes and just take them down now we get to the rock tunnel hiker and in this part we don't really have much that we can do other than use sonic boom on him and we can see that that self-destruct is doing decent damage and he takes us down Let's try this again. Let's see how many attempts it's going to take. So here we use Sonic Boom. We take a self-destruct. We're going to use Sonic Boom again on the second Geodude. And please don't self-destruct, Graveler. We finally got through. 
So with that being done, we can get through the Rust Rock Tunnel and make our way to Rival 4. Rival 4, we can lead off with a Thunderbolt to take down Firo. We're going to use Sonic Boom here to take down Magnemite. One Thunderbolt on the Shelter. Back to Sonic Boom to take down the Sandshrew. And one Thunderbolt knocks out the Eevee. Done and done. So now let's go try to take on Erika. I mean, we don't have good moves to take her down, but maybe with Paralysis it will work. So here we paralyze the Tangela, and we're going to go into Thunderbolt. I think it's the strongest play here. And we can take that one down eventually. Perfect. Now, we actually get to learn Super Sonic. We could try to confuse the Weeping Bell. No, it misses, and we get put to sleep and taken out. So, okay, maybe that was just bad luck. No, we couldn't get through Erika, so we gave up. Let's go fight Team Rocket, where Thunderbolt is just absolutely wrecking their team. Perfect. Now, let's see if Giovanni is possible. We are going to start by using Super Sonic here, but Super Sonic's so inaccurate, I finally gave up and just said, let's just use Sonic Boom instead, and we take down the Onyx. Let's use Sonic Boom on Rhyhorn. We take it down, and now it's two Thunderbolts to take down the Persian. We survive with four HP, done and done. So we make our way through the Lavender Tower and get to the Ghost Marowak. Which, again, we're going to see, it can do some pretty decent damage to us, but fortunately, Sonic Boom takes it down. Now, against Team Rocket, we are just going straight for Thunderbolt. We one-shot Meowth and Arbok and two-shot Weezing. There we go. So with that being done, we save Mr. Fuji and we have to decide our next play. I decide, let's go fight Rival 5. Let's just try this. Let's see if we can get through. So we're going to start by trying to confuse the Sand Slash, and then we are actually using Sonic Boom to try to get through this fight. So it takes a few attempts. We get taken out the first time. I give up and just say, you know what? Let's go down and fight Koga instead, because that's going to give us a badge boost in defense that might make us strong enough to tank some attacks from that Sand Slash. So here against Koga, we're just using Thunderbolt and trying to take down these Venonats. So it's a couple of Thunderbolts for each. We get taken out. Okay, let's try this again. We're going to actually now use Thunder Wave. Let's paralyze them and see if that works. We take down the first Venonat, paralyze the second. We take it down, paralyze the third Venonat, and a couple Thunderbolts takes it out. We're all the way to Venomoth, but with one HP, it uses double team. That's fine and we get KO'd. So here, it looks so close. So I'm just gonna grind this out, grind this out. Let's see if we can get it to work. After a bunch of attempts, I think we might be able to get this one, but it's not easy, as you can see, because they have good moves like Toxic and Psychic that can actually do decent damage and take us out. Here in this one, we are going to use Thunderbolt right away to take down the first Venonat. One Thunderbolt critical hit takes out each of the other Venonats. And now on Venomoth, it uses Toxic and that lets us take it down. So we have now gotten through Koga and I'm going to pick up all of the relevant items in the Safari Zone. And let's just get back and see if now a couple levels higher we can take on some of these tough trainers that we had before, starting with Erika. For Erika, we are now seven levels higher, so we are going to confuse and paralyze the Tangela, use Thunderbolt to take it down. Now, we confuse and we paralyze the Weepin' Bell, and we can take it down as well. Gloom, confuse it and paralyze it, and now Thunderbolt. It's going to take three hits, but she goes down. We have the rainbow badge. So we've got six badges done, and it's time to go back and see if we can take down rival five. So here against rival five, the whole goal is to confuse him. And now we're using Swift instead of Sonic Boom. It actually looks like it's doing less damage than before. 
but we get to Cloyster and we take it down with one Thunderbolt. And now we are going to try to confuse and paralyze the Magneton and take it down. Yeah, that didn't work. So it's time to come back and try this again. Maybe we just got some bad ranges. Maybe we can get a little more lucky and get through this one. We get through Sand Slash again, one shot again on Cloyster. Here we have confused the Magneton, but it confuses us as well. And it uses Sonic Boom and takes us down. We grind this one out multiple times and it's really just not working. Like we cannot paralyze the Sand Slash because it's immune to Thunder Wave. And really Supersonic isn't that good. It's got such low accuracy. So how do we get through this one? Well, fortunately folks, there is actually an exploit that we can use in order to make this battle that looks impossible eventually become possible. You see, we can take advantage of the fact that we can get the Flash HM. So all we're going to do is we're going to go to the Safari Zone and catch the 10 Pokemon that are required, then go see Professor Oak's aid, and we are going to be able to get access to Flash. So we're going to learn Flash here over Supersonic, because even though Flash also isn't very accurate, it's going to allow us to drop our opponent's accuracy, meaning we can survive more turns. So let's try this on Rival 5 now. And we are also going to use Double Team here, because there is going to be a very incredible exploit with this strategy, folks. So with our brand new moveset, Toxic, Flash, and Double Team, I think we're going to see just how broken this battle can be. So, here against the rival, what we are going to do is we are going to start by setting up Double Team, and then we are going to use Toxic. Then what we can do is use Flash to actually reduce his accuracy. You see, evasion and accuracy are separate stats, guys. So, evasion drops or evasion increases and accuracy drops work in tandem. So here we take down Magneton. We're all the way here now to Kadabra. We're going to poison it with Toxic, stall it out. There we go. Now, poison the Flareon with Toxic and we are going to use Flash to lower its accuracy and it just can't hit us. We take it down. So let's take out Team Rocket. They're gonna be a piece of cake. We're just gonna set up one double team and then go into Thunderbolt. And they're really not too hard. We aren't gonna relearn Thunder Wave at this point. I decided to just stick with the strat that I have. And here I decided to try Giovanni without double team, just to see if it's possible. So. I actually learned Takedown over Double Team here. Basically, if we don't have to use Double Team the entire run, I'd prefer not to. But here we can see that we are using Toxic to take down the Rhyhorn, but we're taking a lot of damage. Let's try this one more time. One Thunderbolt is basically enough. It's a range to take down the Nidorino. We take two Thunderbolts to take down Persian, now Toxic and we are trying to lower the accuracy of the Rhyhorn and just let Toxic whittle it down. Hopefully we get through with enough health that then we can take down the Nidoqueen, but we just don't have enough HP left. I try this over and over and over again, and it's really just not working in this one. We'll get all the way to Nidoqueen, but we just don't have the HP to actually take her down. So, what can we do? Well, one thing we can do is we can go and fight Blaine instead. Because Blaine will give us another badge and give us a special boost. That could help. So here, the strategy is we're going to start by setting up Flash. We get taken out the first time by the Ninetales. Let's try this again. We're trying to set up Flash to lower its accuracy. And then we are going to try to go into Toxic in order to whittle it down, and we can use some Thunderbolts to speed up the process. 
The problem is we keep getting confused by the Ninetales and their attacks hit pretty hard. So time to go back and buy another double team TM. So if you're actually doing this one at home, folks, double team plus flash is the strategy. It is the way to go. We go ahead and forget takedown and we just go into spamming double team and flash on his Pokemon and using Toxic. And we can see now we're getting to Arcanine, at least. So here in this one, we are going to spam our double teams. We're getting all of our badge boosts and we are going to use Toxic and Flash. And basically, once we do that, he has a very low chance of hitting us. On the Rapidash, we are getting Toxic, and now we are just going to take it down. And Toxic on Arcanine, we're going to use Flash to try to lower its accuracy to keep it from doing any damage to us whatsoever. And there we go, we take him down. Perfect. Or six badges, done. So now, let's go and do one more thing. Before we go back and fight Giovanni, we can get a stronger move than Takedown to use on his Pokemon. I decide that what I'm going to do is gamble at the game corner until I get 5,500 coins. Getting 5,500 coins will enable us to get the Hyper Beam TM, which will be our strongest physical move in this run. So it takes a small eternity to get the luck at the slots in order to make this work. And basically, all you have to do is just keep going in and out until you get in this lucky mode and you can get massive amounts of coins. So now that I've gotten 5,500 coins, I go ahead and buy the Type for Beam TM. And we are going to go ahead and teach that to our Magneton. So what move should we forget? I decide in this one, let's forget takedown and let's go try to take out Giovanni. So here against Giovanni, we are going to use one Thunderbolt to take out Nidorino, one to take out Persian. Now it's toxic and we're going to go ahead and use Hyper Beam to try to take down the Rhyhorn as quickly as possible. Now against Nidoqueen, we are going to set up some flashes in order to lower her accuracy and then the goal is to use Hyper Beam to take her out. So with all our flashes set up, we can see that Hyper Beam's doing about one third. And there we go. Three Hyper Beams takes her down. So with that being done, we can move on now to take on Sabrina. And Hyper Beam's probably our best bet here. So let's just try it. Here, we are going to start by using Hyper Beam. We get the KO on Abra. Hyper Beam, after we set up some flashes, hopefully we'll KO Kadabra. Let's find out. We use Toxic here, and we're basically just trying to lower its accuracy. And it's already lowered our accuracy with Kinesis, but we take it out. Now, Toxic, and we are going to just spam some flashes to try to prevent damage from the Alex Dam. And we get it to go down. Perfect. So Sabrina is done. Now it's time to go take on the biggest challenge in the entire run, which is going to be Giovanni. So we picked up the Mimic TM and we're going to learn that right now. We're going to Mimic Earthquake in order to do damage here. And I decide to replace Hyper Beam because Hyper Beam really just isn't going to do that much for us here. And let's go ahead and learn Double Team 2 over the top of Toxic, because Toxic can't affect Nidoking and Nidoqueen. So let's try this. Giovanni, let's go. So we grind here for quite a while, trying to get through this fight, and it's really just not working. Even with Double Team and Flash, lowering their accuracy and increasing our evasion, we're just not getting through this fight. So in the end, I have to go ahead and even use some rare candies here in order to get to a higher level. Now at a higher level, we are getting to Rhyhorn and we almost took it out that time. Let's try this. Let's see how many attempts it's going to take. 
And really, the issue is, of course, the Duck Trio can just one-shot us at the beginning of the fight. And when we do get deep into his team, we still have to contend with Earthquake from both of the Nidos and Rhydon. So here, we are going to set up six double teams right off the bat. And then we are going to try to mimic Earthquake. With Earthquake, it's a two-hit KO on the Duck Trio. Now, we can Thunderbolt the Persian down with one hit. It's going to be two hits on Nidoqueen. Now, a couple of hits on Nido King as well. And we are going to try to lower the accuracy of Rhydon. And we can see that we're not doing that much damage. But we get a couple critical hits and we finally take him down. So there we go. Eight badges. But unlike Arcanine, we were using double team for about half of this run so far. Let's try Rival 6. So here... We're going to set up our double teams, and now we are going to go ahead and set up a couple flashes as well. And we have to decide what move to mimic here. I decide to mimic Swift in this one, and basically we're just using Swift and hoping for good ranges to take him down. Now, it's actually a single Thunderbolt to take down Execute and to take down Cloyster, and we level up right here. Let's see what we can do against Magneton. Magneton does no Swift, but we take it down. Kadabra hits us with Psybeam. So we have to do this a bunch of times because really just getting past the Sand Slash is a huge challenge. It no Swift, so our accuracy lowering tactics don't always work. And when we get to Magneton, it can be the exact same thing because Magneton also knows Swift. This is a big difference in Pokemon Yellow versus Red and Blue, is a lot of opponents actually use Swift, so Double Team is much worse. So here, finally on this attempt, we're gonna set up our Double Teams. We don't take any Swifts up to this point. We do take a huge Slash. We're gonna Mimic Slash on this one and take the Sand Slash down. Again, it's actually arranged to take down the Execute with one Thunderbolt, but we take it down with two, take down Cloyster. Now let's try Slash on the Magneton and Thunderbolt to take it down. We're gonna use Slash on Kadabra. It takes two hits, but we take it out. And finally, Thunderbolts to take down the Flareon. So we have gotten to the Elite Four now, and let's see how the Elite Four goes for our Magneton. Starting off with Lorelei. Lorelei is probably the easiest, right? I mean, Thunderbolt's super effective against Dugong. We can set up our double teams once she rests. And now it's just one Thunderbolt. It goes down one Thunderbolt on the Cloister. Here, we are going to mimic Amnesia to raise our special stat. And now with one HP, we can still one shot all the rest of her Pokemon. That's ridiculous. Amnesia is completely OP. With that being done, we survived on one HP, but that's okay. Just heal up and go take on Bruno. So for Bruno, we are going to lead off with the double team, of course, to get the badge boost. We can see that we survived a dig from the Onyx. Now we're gonna set up a couple of flashes to lower its accuracy even further and we are going to mimic Dig. With Dig, we can actually do damage here, but we get a lucky hit and get KO'd. Okay, let's try this again. Double team, and once we get all of our double teams set up, we are going to just try to lower its accuracy as much as possible with Flash. And now we want to hopefully get the chance to mimic Dig. So now we use Mimic, let's get Dig, and hopefully it doesn't dig at the same time we do. We're doing about a third damage here. And there we go. We take down the first Onyx. Now Thunderbolt one-shots Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee. We can just use some digs here on the Onyx to take it down. And back to Thunderbolt to take down Machamp. So there we go. That actually wasn't very bad. So we might be home clear at this point. Agatha. Let's try her battle. In this one, we're definitely going to be leaning on Thunderbolt. 
But first, double team. This one, I'm not 100% sure that double team is required, but we don't have any super effective moves here. It's very different from Arcanine, Rhydon, Dug Trio that we've done recently that all had ground type moves. But we take down the first Gengar and the Golbat, take down Haunter. Now we're using Thunderbolt to take down Arbok. And we can just mimic Psychic here uh, from the last Gengar and use Psychic to take it down. Nope. We get KO'd. <laughs> that was ridiculous. It was so close. Okay, let's try this again. We are going to set up all of our devil teams here and Thunderbolt these Pokemon down. Haunter goes down. Arbok shouldn't be a problem. We're going to use a few flashes here just to lower its accuracy. We take it down. And let's lower the accuracy of Gengar this time. Let's not leave anything to chance here. So... Once we get its accuracy down, we are going to Mimic Psychic. And here, it's just a matter of getting three Psychics, and we take her out. There we go. On to Lance. Lance shouldn't be too hard, I think, right? Because we're just going to take out the Gyarados with Thunderbolt. Then, once we get to the second Dragonair, once we get to the second Dragonair, we can just Mimic Ice Beam. Should be a piece of cake. Yeah, this one takes quite a few attempts. Here, we are going to try this strategy where we start by setting up double team on the dragon or on the Gyarados. And now we are going to use our the rest of our double teams here on the first Dragonair. And we're going to try to use Thunderbolt to take it down. Takes a few hits, but we take it out. Now we can mimic Ice Beam. By mimicking Ice Beam, we are able to do decent damage here, one-shotting the Dragonair, one-shotting the Aerodactyl. And here, we're going to use some flashes and one-shot on the Dragonite. So there we go. We have taken down all of the Elite Four members. Not super easy. Let's see if the champion is even possible with this Pokemon. So, against the champion, we are going to start by spamming Double Team, of course. And then we are going to also try to lower its accuracy, but we get hit with two Earthquakes, we're done. There's nothing we can do. I decide it's time to use the rest of our Rare Candies to get to the highest level we possibly can. So, at this point, we're going to get all the way to level 59. That's as best as we can do because we've had to use rare candies already when we fought Giovanni. Let's see if we can get through now. Here, setting up our double teams and our flashes, we're just trying to lower his accuracy. It's actually a higher a chance to reduce his hits if we use one double team and then one flash and rotate back and forth like that. That's why I'm switching between the moves. Now we're going to Mimic Earthquake and use Earthquake to take him out. It's three hits. Against Alakazam, one hit from Earthquake. And now I decide to use Thunderbolt here against Exeggutor. We take it down. Earthquake takes down Magneton, one Thunderbolt on Cloyster. And it's two Earthquakes, but we take out Flareon. So Magneton has completed this challenge, but... It took a lot of luck and a lot of work to do it. If you don't like Double Team, you should fail this Pokemon all the way back at Rival 5. But with Double Team, we were able to make it work on minimum battles. Let's try Mewtwo. So here against Mewtwo, we are going to start by spamming some Double Teams, of course, but Mewtwo uses Swift, meaning we can be taken out, guys. Again, this isn't Pokemon Red and Blue. Double Team isn't that strong. Here, we are using Thunderbolt, though, with all our badge boosts, and we take it down. So, Magneton is done. But before we leave today, I want to do something a little special. You see, we just dropped the brand new RBY Pokemon Challenges membership, and we have our first three members. So, we got to give them a proper shout out 